electric band as really, uh, well, it's strings. You know, it's a, still a string band fundamentally, even though it's electric. Uh, so that, and the addition of the the drums and that made it sort of more like bluegrass, which is a more intensely rhythmic kind of music. So for me, the elements were there. It was like a, I viewed the the band, the Grateful Dead, or, or or the Warlocks, or whatever, from the very beginning. It's like, well, this is a blue blues band in one sense. In other words, the the instrumentation and everything is is traditionally what what a blues band has had and in that sense this is a traditional band but it's also a kind of mutated like a kind of like a bluegrass band on a certain level i mean you could approach it bluegrass is a nice metaphor for how music can work as a group in other words uh, bluegrass is a conversational music and i thought it'd be nice to have an electric band that was that way it was conversational where the instruments talk to each other you know uh, and it's a way to organize music. So for me, I know your writer and the arrangement, particularly the Grateful Dead arrangement that Grateful Dead uses, is, is has a lot of conversation in it. And the instruments kind of talk to each other. And uh, that was that was the sense that I thought that was a model for how a band could work. You know what I mean? And it's extracted from all kinds of things, but that's fundamentally an early model of how, how a band could work. So, which is my... My, my throw out, you know, it's what I threw out. Say, okay, how could a, a, a five piece, which we originally were a five piece electric band, work? How could it, how could it relate? How could the instruments relate to each other? What would their roles be? You know, and so forth. Uh, so that was, you know, that was it with bits and pieces of regular stuff. So, like in blues, one kind of style of blues, the two guitars, like Jimmy Reed, say, uh, two guitar and a harmonica style of blues. The way the instruments work there is there's a conversation between the guitars. One guitar plays low runs, and the other guitar plays little high licks less frequently. But they work, t they stay out of each other's register. They stay out of each other's range, and it's a very pretty sound. And the bass plays, you know, just simple stuff in the bottom. And that the, the and the harmonica plays like over the top. And it's, it has, there's a sense to it, you know. And it makes it very transparent because the instruments are, are open. Their discussion is like open. You know, there's a lot of air in there. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty way to work. So we sort of patterned the way we work and the way we approach things, kind of extrapolated from that idea. I mean, you have to decide, somewhere along the line, when you're playing, you have to decide, are we all going to play the same or are we all going to play differently? I mean, the Grateful Dead always had the disease where we played differently, so that's what we had to work with. But luckily, that approach is not un totally unknown. I mean, it's, it's a way a lot of music works that way. Either they work that way because the instrumentation is different, like in a string quartet, or they work that way because uh, uh, the music demands it. You know, like in, a, say, a mandolin orchestra, you know, where everybody's playing the same instrument, but, but they're all playing different parts. Your, your own uh, guitar style has evolved over the I mean, you, you have so much confidence in it. I mean, you don't feel like you have to, uh, you know, go berserk in order to make people hear what you're uh, getting across. <laughs> well, I, I'm hoping to not have to go berserk at all. <laughs> I mean, I will if it, the situation really calls for it. But really, I uh, my model for playing is is based on a psychedelic experience also. My, my model for, like, when I go on stage, what am I trying to accomplish? Okay, here's the story. <laughs> And there's one time we played, it, it was, we were playing at the old Fillmore, and it was after Bill Graham wasn't running it anymore. So there was some independent, like a hippies, some, some hippies, local hippies, ha, uh, rented it for some cause or another or whatever. Anyway, we were playing there, it was with, but Bill, Bill wasn't running it. So it was a little, a little bit strange, and uh, there, like, some weird bands were playing on the same bill with us, like maybe like at that time, say like the Flaming Groovies or somebody like, you know what I mean? Some of the bands that were happening back at that time, this like the late 60s, uh, or the middle late 60s. Uh, so somebody, some this guy who was like sort of a famous freak and, and the, the, ran around the scene in those days, comes in and he's got this big birthday cake. He's got this huge big birthday cake. You know, you look, I'm looking at it and thinking, that's got, that thing has got to be dosed. I just know this. this like, I, know, I know it's dosed, you know. I'm looking at it and looking at it and looking at it and thinking, yeah, that's what you, I'm sure it's done. And then I said, but it, it looked good. You know, it was beautiful, this beautiful big, you know, so I thought, ah, well, I'll just, I'll just take a little, a little of the frosting here, you know, just, just you know, <laughs> I'll just take a little snack. <laughs> so I took this and then somebody comes in and says, yeah, we put, uh, about 800 hits of acid in that frosting, you know, and I go, oh, oh God, you know, I'm going to, oh, Jesus Christ, I'm going to be 
totally fucking wiped out on this, you know. And, and by this time, I didn't really enjoy playing, uh, you know, under the influence of psychedelics because I didn't have the freedom to quit if I wanted to. It wasn't really that much fun to play when you when you don't have the option, you know, when you don't have options. So I mean, it it, uh, it, it wasn't something I was looking forward to. And and so I'm sitting there and I'm waiting to play and we're we're and going and later it gets getting later and later and later and I'm coming on now I'm going on like all the places swimming and and I start to hear the overhear people you know and I'm like, going all going off in this paranoid space and I think. God, this place is full of mafia guys, and they're all trying to kill me, you know. <laughs> I got that notion in my head, you know. This guy, you know, this guy comes in, he's, he looks he looks exactly like a mafia guy, you know. He says, here, you want something to drink? And I look at like, uh, poison, you know. Dead. No, no, they, no thanks, you know. <laughs> it's like everybody is armed to the teeth. They're all trying to kill me, okay. So and we're I'm waiting there going, oh, shit, I'm, this is it. This is my last life, night on earth, you know. I'm convinced of this now. Yeah, <laughs> still in this uh, psychedelic roar, you know. And so we're going out on stage, you know, to go play, and I'm, I'm going out there, and I'm thinking, oh, God, you know, Jesus, what have I done to deserve this? You know, I'm going to go out there and play, and they're going to fucking kill me, you know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I got, and the only thing I could think of to do was I, I, I said, okay, I, I'm just going to play for my life. I'm going to play for my life. That's what I'm going to do, you know. And so I played for my life, and they let me live. <laughs> Ever since then, you know, I mean, that, so that, you know, ever since then, I thought, that works, you know, for me, is to, to play for my life, you know, so, you know, that, that uh, you know, when I forget what I'm doing or why I'm doing it, I, I play for my life. I wonder what comment you have on some of the newer music, um, 